What's going on? This is Tanner Ingram with Flyright RC. We're going to be doing a tutorial today on building a RC helicopter head. I'm going to be building the AK400, which is, believe it or not, the first step in this kit, so it worked out well for this video. Um, I'm going to go through how to build the head, how to assemble the thrust bearings, uh, how to grease the dampers, and how to get it together so it doesn't come apart your first flight, or start giving you a wobble if you mess these things up, you're pretty much guaranteed to have a wobble. Um, I'm going to be building the head, but these steps are also for the tail. Pretty much the same components, just you're doing the tail. So to start, you're going to need some grease. Uh, there's three greases I've got out right here that I like to use. The TriFlow Clear Synthetic Grease is pretty good, pretty easy to find. I got that at a bike shop. Um, Boto Lube, really good stuff. This is probably my go-to. You can get it at A Main. And also... There's dry fluid, extreme gear lube. I got this at Aeropanda, really good stuff for the thrust bearings. Um, I've tried them all and they all work very well. So just pick what you prefer and uh, go with it. Um, the first step that I like to do is to go ahead and grease your dampers. So best method for this is I like to get a little bag and put all of the components in the bag before you start everything. So I've got two dampers here that have some o-rings on them and then two o-rings that go in the head already in the bag put them all down in there get your preferred grease and just spray it down in there this stuff looks old not a great color but it should work get her down in there and just really work it in So it gets all over. You can do this with your hands, which I've done. I found that is incredibly messy, so a little bag method is uh, probably the way to go. All right, now that these are soaking in your grease, your dampers for the head block, we're gonna go ahead and move over to assembling one of the grips with the thrust bearings. Um, every kit is gonna be different, so follow the manual. I'll try to overlay a picture of what I'm looking at here so you can see it a little bit better. Um, but essentially, I've got a bearing in the back here, and then everything else goes in the front of the grip. So our first step is to build the thrust bearing, which this is the part that you, if you get it backwards, it's, it's not going to go well. You're going to have a wobble. You're going to have issues. Um, every single kit is going to have thrust bearings in the head, and they're going to have a bigger, there's going to be two pieces that look like this, inner and outer races for the thrust bearing, and then the actual bearing part in the middle. Um, the bigger inner diameter is always going to go, let's say your grip is going over here, is always going to go on the inside. And then you're going to have this piece, which I'll talk about here in a second, that goes on there. And then the smaller inner diameter goes on the outside, so that when there's force going out when it's spinning, the smaller one is, or I guess, I'm sorry, the bigger one is pushing on the smaller one on the outside. So it's kind of pushing in on the piece that actually fits the shaft well. You can measure these inner and outer diameter, figure out which part is which with calipers. I found it easier just to put it on the feathering shaft. And so you can see this one isn't moving too much. So we know this one is probably the smaller inner diameter. And this one moves a lot. So it's got the bigger inner diameter. So let's go ahead and grease these guys up. I like to put some on my finger and then really pack it into this part of the gear, the thrust bearing. I don't know why I put it on my left hand. I'm right-handed. Really pack it down in there. I pretty much put it on my finger and then force it in all the way around. This is going to get messy. Push it down in there. Maybe a little bit more. All right, so I've got that piece nice and packed. A lot of grease in there. I'll just rub my finger on the other side to get some of the leftover on the other side. You don't have to pack the other side because it's flat. 
mostly flat. It doesn't have the cup like the side I just packed does. I'll put this, I guess, on a piece of plastic so it doesn't get my mat all dirty. The next part is to pack the inner and outer rings. I pretty much just do the same method here. You don't need as much. All the way around. Got that one packed. And from this step, we're going to go ahead and let's see which which one do I want to do first. We're going to go ahead and take our dampers out and go ahead and put them in the head and we're going to get the feathering shaft in. Got too much grease on my hands to get this bag open. There we go. So follow your manual for this step. Every helicopter is going to be different. I like to get a little more grease, just do a little bit more after it's been sitting in the bag, make sure it's fully covered. Go ahead and jam the first piece in there. So we have our dampers in the head. I wasn't lying when I said it was messy. Uh, next step is we're going to put a little grease on our feathering shaft. I probably got enough on my hands to do this, but why not add a little bit more here? Once it's greased up, slide it through. Like I'm pushing some... Uh, grease out the other side of course it's important to clean out the feathering shaft as well because all this grease isn't going to mix well with the uh, Loctite we're going to put on so this isn't even I usually try to get it remotely even at this step damn it all right once you've got your feathering shaft in there I like to keep it even makes it easier to work with not required at this step but it pays off uh, when you actually put the grips on there so let's go ahead and build our grip i'm going to go ahead and put one of them on there i've got actually let me check all right i need to put some washers on this side of the feathering shaft according to the manual and before you put the grip on I highly recommend cleaning out that hole. Now you can use a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol or twist up some paper towel probably is what I'm gonna do because it's so small. how dirty that was always a good idea to clean out your uh, feathering shafts clean the whole helicopter as you're building it there's always factory grease on everything 
and uh, Loctite, some Loctite will bond to it. Uh, the new, I know newer Loctite has the ability to bond to it, but I still don't trust it. I don't like my helicopters coming apart in the air, so I spend the time cleaning everything. I'd rather have to take this apart with a torch down the road than uh, have it come apart in the air. I just keep going until it comes out clean. We're gonna have to do this again down the road, so this step, just get as much as you can. We're gonna have to do it one more time once we get the, uh, the grip on there. Look at that, that just came out of the, uh, the other grip, the other side. A lot of grease in there. All right, once you've got your feathering shaft cleaned out, you feel good about the amount of grease that was left over or it comes out clean, um, follow your manual and put any washers that you need in before the grip. Make sure I've got both of mine on here. Yep. Now I'm just gonna slide one of the grips on here. And the next step is we're gonna build what's good, what goes in the grip on the end of a driver backwards. And you'll see why here in a moment. So I'm gonna follow my manual. Got a bearing on the far outside. A washer, which washer do I use? I'm sitting here looking at four washers that are all different sizes. Okay, the smaller one goes on here. All right, got that sorted out. We've got our bearing, washer, and then we're gonna look for our, what goes on the outside, the uh, smaller inner diameter. So it's gonna be the one that, like I mentioned before, doesn't move much. That one's got a lot of play, so I'm thinking that's the bigger one. Yep, not much play there. Put that guy on there. And then the actual bearing part that goes in there is debatable which way you can put it. You can't really go wrong either way. Um, I know people have done experiments where they have one on each side of the head that go both ways and it doesn't affect the performance. I like to put it so the cup side is facing in towards the head and that kind of, in theory, I guess, what I imagine it does is it holds a lot of the grease in there um, with centrifugal force going with the, uh, the head spinning as fast as it does. I'm gonna add a little more grease to this guy. It rubbed off on me. All right, so that is this stack, as you can see in the background, and I'll have a little overlay so you can see what I'm looking at in the background. Um, built it reverse on here so that I can just slap this driver into the feathering shaft and it all falls on the feathering shaft. I found this to be the easiest method. Boom, we're in there. You might need something to press it all down in there. Um, if not, you can use your screw, which we'll get to here in just a moment. So you've got one side built. Um, at this point, you probably wanna go in and clean out the grease that you just pushed back into the feathering shaft again, and go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side, and once you're there. All right, how about this? I'm gonna rebuild the other side thrust bearing again, since this is the part that most people mess up, and I'm gonna do it the original method that I used to do it. Um, Instead of putting it all on the driver, I would just jam it down in there one by one. Then you get mixed up on what you've put in there, what you haven't. Things get all kinds of messed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the larger inner diameter in there first, the one that you know had a little bit more play on it. Put it down there on the feathering shaft. It 
didn't even seat very well. This is why I'm not a huge fan of this method. Next piece, cup side in, facing the head. Smaller inner diameter next that fit the feathering shaft pretty much perfect. Less grease I've got to dig out of the feathering shaft later. Wipe that off. I just realized my camera angle's not great. Hopefully this is helpful. We'll see how it turns out. Um, what am I missing? A washer and bearing. See, this is why I like putting it all on the driver. So you don't forget any steps. The amount of times I've built ahead and forgot a washer, put in thrust bearings wrong, is unbelievable. So this is a proven method that has been working for me for a while. Use the main shaft here to push it down. That worked out well. And finally the bearing. All down in there. So we've got everything in minus the two screws. So next step is going to be to clean out the feathering shaft once again on both sides. Um, try not to, if you're using rubbing alcohol, try not to use too much and you know wipe it out of the thrust bearings you just built. That would be counterproductive. And then also clean off these two screws that are going to go into the uh, the feathering shaft. It's as simple as grabbing it, dunking it in some rubbing alcohol. I just wipe it off until it's clean and repeat. Yep. There's a thrust bearing coming apart if I did not do this. So, all right, at this step, we've got our head built with the spindle cleaned out. So there's no grease in there. Your uh, swabs are coming out clean. You've got both of your screws cleaned off. So they're coming off clean as well. No oil or anything on there. Um, and also wash your hands for this step uh, if you do the uh, Loctite method the way that I do so you don't get residual grease back on these guys. Uh, disclaimer, before this next step, like I said, I would rather torch to get my screws out than have it come apart in the air. So blue Loctite might work for some people. I've been burned too many times, so we're using red for this guy. Get a little red on that screw. Twist it all around. You don't want to use so much Loctite that it's going to ooze out and get back in your thrust bearings. And finally, we're going to slap these guys together. Get one side started until you can see the other one start rotating, the other side. Maybe before you start this, look around and make sure you didn't forget any washers laying around on the table. It's always fun to have to take this thing back apart. And then once it's in there, just crank down both sides. You should be good to go. Nice. And they will feel a little notchy when they're stock, but if you pull them, like they will be in flight, they'll feel smooth. That's how thrust bearings work. So, should be set, and uh, thank you for watching.